lawyer. It depends on what you mean by my colleagues. <laughs> when, it, when, we, when we first started doing this research back in the late 70s, early 80s, no one had heard about these things. And we did, we did a, a panel at the um, 1980 American Medical Association, and Mike Sabom, a cardiologist, was there, and Ken Ring, and a couple of others. And we had a packed crowd. It was, they really wanted to hear about this. But after we finished talking, there was a lot of silence in the room. And one person stood up and said, I've been a cardiologist for 30 years. I've never heard a single one of these stories. How do you know these people aren't just making it up? And then someone else stood up and said, I'm one of his patients, and I still wouldn't tell him about my hand the <laughs> Now when we give these same talks, it's very common to have doctors in the audience stand up and tell about their near-death experiences. So it is becoming more common. Having said that, you all know that the powers that control the medical journals and certainly the NIH and NSF, this isn't their favorite topic. No. So it's hard to get funding, it's hard to get publications, but there's becoming more and more of a grassroots effort. And one of the things I like about teaching in the medical school is that we're infecting the next generation of doctors. So as uh, Max Planck said, science progresses funeral by funeral. <laughs> Unless there are some announcements, I would personally like to thank you all for being here.